Today I'm joined by Dan Jolly, a multimedia writer who has been in the business of writing for well over two decades. He has written everything from novels, comic books, children's books, and video games. He is here today to discuss his latest writing project, Prototype 2, the sequel to the popular 2009 video game from Activision. He is also the head writer of the new six-part comic series from Dark Horse Comics that serves to bridge the two prototype games. I am pleased to have him here joining me through Skype. Thank you, Mr. Jolly, for being here. My pleasure. Uh, Dan, your portfolio of work is diverse and of a high caliber. You're a unique modern writer who can write it all. What was the series of fortunate events that led you to becoming the principal writer for the new game? Well, um, I had started working with Radical Entertainment on another game entirely, uh, one that ended up getting canceled. So I worked with them on that for about three or four months and uh, got a good bit of work done. So I was familiar with everybody there and you know they knew me and knew the kind of work that I did. So um, that game went away and uh, I guess it was four or five months after that that they came back and said, hey, what we're going to be doing now is, is the sequel to the game that we did in 2009, Prototype. Prototype 2, um, did you play that game? And I said, mm, no, <laughs> I, I didn't really know anything about it. Um, but they said, well, we would be interested in having you write the, the, all the dialogue and uh, some of the story for the game. So, you know, I said, well, sure, yeah, sign me up. And uh, that's, that's how that got started. Awesome. Um, you know, as a writer, from a writer's perspective, Prototype 2 was something that was already made. I mean, the, the franchise was already there. Uh, it's a unique situation where you're in inheriting an already developed character, the settings are there. What would you say are the challenges as a writer when you're doing such a thing, such a job, an assignment like that? Well, it wasn't as hard uh, to sort of put my own stamp on this as it might have been, just because um, the protagonist from the first game, Alex Mercer, is not the protagonist of the second game. So um, I was basically able to come in with the new character, Sergeant James Heller, and um, sort of, I mean, with the rest of the radical team, we all just invented this guy, mm -hmm. you know, just built him from the ground up. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was a sequel, and of course we had to take into account the Alex Mercer character uh, and uh, do him justice but uh, it was also kind of like uh, writing an original game just because the character uh, hadn't been seen before. Mm -hmm. So you've never played the game, the first game? Well, I did. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, once, once Radical contacted me mm -hmm. uh, for, through Activision, the publisher, uh, yeah, I, I immediately got my hands on a copy of the game and and played as much of it as I could. And what did you think of it? I uh, I sucked at that game. <laughs> I just got my head handed to me on multiple occasions. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, when you are a game writer, mm -hmm. uh, doing research on a game like that is just that. It's research. You're not really playing it from the same perspective as, a, as just a, a, a player playing it for pleasure. Uh, I was going through studying it, studying the story, trying to get a grasp on all of the characters, you know, understand all of the underlying structure. Mm -hmm. What did you think of the story? Um, well, I mean, Radical will readily admit that the story had a few hiccups in it. Okay. Uh, what were and, the hiccups? <laughs> well... For uh, for a number of reasons, and I you know I don't want to try to say exactly right. mm -hmm. what went wrong and exactly how, um, because I think that's something that Radical would probably be better suited to talk about. Right. Uh, there were just there were some things that happened involving like time constraints, budget constraints. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I I don't think they were completely satisfied with it when mm -hmm. it shipped. Mm -hmm. So uh, a big part of what we're doing for the sequel not only is telling a new story, but is also kind of trying to 
fix a little bit of what uh, of what people weren't satisfied with in the first game. But from like a you know a storyteller's point of view, did you find any flaws in the character or in the just the whole idea of how he gets his powers or what he does with it? Well, it depends on what you mean by flaws. Like, um, uh, well, one of the things that I, I haven't played the game, but one of the things I felt like was problem was that like he just keeps becoming more powerful and more powerful. You know, I just well, yeah, that, that was one reason why we uh, didn't want to make him the uh, protagonist in the second game. Right. Because by the end of the first game, he had become so powerful. Uh, right. That, you know, it's a little bit. So what's a new challenge? To, to, right. go, to go somewhere from there. Exactly. Uh, you know, uh, writing comic books with superheroes, sometimes you run into the same problem. Right. Uh, you know, you, you create a character who is so powerful that the only way you can create any meaningful conflict is to either pit him against some sort of uh, threat that is, like, ridiculously huge mm -hmm. or give him some kind of stupid weakness. So yeah, that's that's why we wanted to go back and uh, and create somebody new for this. Um, looking at the character Alex Mercer, uh, play the playing playing audience was kind of divided about him because there are a lot of people who just love him to pieces. You know, he's just this this great badass. Uh, and then there are a lot of other people who sort of hated his guts. Uh, because you know, looking at everything he does in the first game, he's not—he's not a hero. Mm -hmm. He is the protagonist in the first game, but you can't call the guy a hero, right? Um, and uh, that's one thing that we wanted to do in the second game: is uh, give the players a character that people can feel pretty much united about. Uh, Heller, Heller has a lot of the same powers that Mercer had. He has um, he, he engages in a lot of the same kinds of wholesale destruction. Mm -hmm. but I think that what we've been able to do is provide him um, a better source for his emotions mm -hmm. than Mercer had. And I think people are going to connect with Heller better than they did with Mercer. Well, since you've talked about James Heller... Why not describe who this guy is? Who is this new Sergeant James Heller? And why is Mercer now the bad guy all of a sudden? That seems to be the number one question in all of the gamers' mind on the forum. Just like, what's going on? Why is Mercer out? Why is Heller in? And I think you went a little bit into it, but just a little bit more, I guess, to retouch it. Well, yeah. Um, and getting into why Mercer is doing what he's doing in the second game, uh, we actually answer that question at least partially in the tie-in comics. Uh, yeah, so in the tie-in comics, we sort of bridge the gap between Prototype 1 and Prototype 2, mm -hmm. and uh, so you get to see some of what motivates Mercer. Uh, sort of where he it, it picks up right after the first game, and we kind of follow, um, again, kind of an emotional arc with him uh, that pretty much sets up why he's doing what he's doing in mm -hmm. the second. Uh, Heller, Heller is in the U.S. military, and while he was overseas on a tour, um, his wife and child were killed during one of the outbreaks of the Black Light virus, which is the, the virus that, that Alex Mercer released. Mm -hmm. So, um, Heller who, under ordinary circumstances, would come a lot closer to being kind of an everyman, mm -hmm. becomes motivated with such a powerful uh, urge for revenge. You know, uh, he blames Mercer for his family's death, and he intends to do whatever he has to do to make sure that that revenge is carried out. 